I work in the field with people that say, or we like to label them having mental health issues, mental health problems. And my question that I've been asked a lot of time from people who we call schizophrenic, why do they hear voices? And are those voices real? And people who are bipolar, what is that that they become bipolar and other people don't? It's a big topic, but an easier one to sort out than most people realize. First, we want to talk about the truly weirdness of hearing voices. (laughs) When you acknowledge that this is a vibrational universe and that you are vibrational beings first and foremost, and you acknowledge that you pick up blocks of thought, When you acknowledge someone like Esther, who has managed through meditation to quiet her mind and therefore release enough resistance that she was able to tune her vibration into the vibration of this broader perspective. When you realize that you've had senses of things that were about to happen, you've thought the phone was ringing even before it was ringing, you realize that this is a vibrational world and that there are people who tune into the vibrations of things and hear them even without needing to hear the auditory description of them. There is much more that is going on vibrationally. Every relationship you have has at its basis much more profoundly the vibrational relationship than it does the verbal relationship. Esther finds herself almost with everyone that she interacts with with words, wanting them to get to the place that they can read her mind because she has so much to say in such a short period of time. She wants to. It's so satisfying to live with someone like Jerry who is so close to the same wavelength where a look sometimes conveys a a, a myriad of sentences where they're living something and they just look at each other and they know that they have complete understanding. They don't have to go back and revisit it verbally all the way to how they got there. Very often they will end up at the same conclusion about something and when they do take the time over dinner to rehash how each of them got there, they came through very different routes but they ended up at the same place. So we just want you to begin by accepting that people, all people, are picking up on vibrations and interpreting them. Now... Esther is receiving the vibration of source. She is receiving that voice of Abraham. It is her voice, but she is receiving this consensus of thought. We are not whispering words into her ear that she is repeating. Instead, we are offering her a vibration. It's like downloading to a computer. And at an unconscious level, she receives it and turns it into words. People do that all the time. Sometimes they're receiving it from broader perspective. Often they're picking it up from what's happening in the physical world. In other words, every thought that's ever been thought still exists and law of attraction gathers those thoughts together so when there is a war against terror and a lot of information coming across about it and the terror alert is high and people are worried about it and a lot of people are talking about it the, a stream of thought about that becomes a very pervasive stream in your consciousness in your mass consciousness so someone who has tuned themselves to pick up on vibrations can begin to read those so just like once you learn to read you could pick up any book and read it it doesn't mean that every book you pick up and read is necessarily a book you want to pick up and read and in the same way just because you begin to translate vibration doesn't mean that every vibration you translate is one that you want to translate but when you're picking up a vibration whether you want to or not it does mean this important thing it means the vibration you're picking up and the translation you are making is a perfect vibrational match to the dominant vibration that is going on within you So, someone who's a schizophrenic, this is a really, Esther said the other day, I feel like a schizophrenic, because on some topic they were talking about, Esther says, this is how I feel about this, and this is how I'm supposed to feel about this. In other words, she recognizes that when she doesn't feel good about something, that the reason that she doesn't feel good is because the broader part of it feels about it a different way. When you're angry with someone, the very fact that you feel anger means that you are a schizophrenic in the sense that the larger part of you is not going there in that anger, and the fact that you are has you separated too strong a word but you're pinching yourself off a little bit so we think that it is very reasonable then to understand that a person could be focusing in their life and accessing thoughts and hearing it Esther doesn't actually hear a voice but she receives the impulse she hears it as it's spoken but many people actually especially if Esther is not talking and listening to us she would say Abraham said and it sounds like something that she's hearing audibly you see 
So we want you to be more surprised that more aren't doing it instead of surprised that some are doing it. We want you to understand that it is the most natural thing in the world and that all of you are doing it all of the time. Now, as we talk about this, as you talk about these people that are in this environment called mental health and what they really what you really mean by that is they're mentally not healthy we want to say to you that at the basis of that is something that is very easy to understand anytime someone is in a situation where they feel powerless in their environment the larger part of them becomes more powerfully evident in other words that the 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 more discomfort you are in the more you are asking and so what happens we love to teach you how to live life know what you don't want know what you do want give your attention to what you do want move into that place live life know what you don't want know what you do want focus on what you do want move into that place live life know what you don't want know what you do want focus on what you do want live into that place in other words that's a wonderful unfolding and using the contrast in just the way you intended as you came forth but there are those and there's nothing wrong with it who live life and really know what they don't want and so they know what they do want and the source within them becomes it but they're captivated by what they don't want that's the group they go to that's the mother they live with that's the people they run around with that's the television shows they watch that's the stuff they read so they really know what they don't want so they really know what they do want but they don't pay attention to what they do want they know what they don't don't want so they know what they don't want so they really know what they do want so they get this big spread between what they're usually vibrating and what they really want so there's a big tug of war going on within them and in time that tug of war is more than they can bear and so there's a sort of breaking down there's a sort of just letting go we've, we've been encouraging you to deliberately let go of the oars but when your situation forces you to let go of the oars because you just can't sort that you call it snapping with what happens is then that letting go of the oars causes them in a more uncontrollable but rapid way to come into alignment with who they really are and they receive this incredible insight but the habits of their thoughts soon take them back into that pattern so it's just a it's just a dramatized version of alignment and not alignment alignment and not alignment some of these people are the best teachers on the planet because their life has caused them to want more than almost anybody you know so their stream is moving faster than almost anybody you know but they haven't learned to manage it because nobody all Almost nobody in the mental health field or in their home or in their school, almost no one will give you permission to have a negative thought or to have a negative feeling. When you start acting out negatively, almost everyone says you should stop it. When your source is calling you through that negative, through the less negative, through the less negative, over to the positive, but you've got to be willing to let yourself take the journey. And the majority of people who are still suffering in the mental health world are suffering because they have not been allowed to take the natural journey. Any of you who have a pillow pressed to your face will be flailing about and then they'll say, oh look, flailers, let's label the flailers. Let's label that flailer this way and this that flailer this way. All you're trying to do is get the damn pillow off your face, you see. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. as you come to understand that everyone wants to feel good and naturally is moving in the direction of that and you let every effort you make be to give them the benefit of the doubt and coax them into that. But what happens when people get disconnected, they do what you call bad things. Things. They do things that threaten your society and then you begin condemning them rather than helping them. Then you log them up and punish them. If you saw someone bleeding on the street, you would do everything in your power to keep them from bleeding. But when you see one, someone shooting a gun or flailing about or punching someone in the face or doing something that your society doesn't want them to do, even though they're in every bit as much need as the one bleeding in the street, almost no one comes to their aid or defense. Immediately you see them as your enemy. And so that's why those like us and those like you are speaking in this way in this time. We're wanting you to come to realize that no matter where you are, you're, you put your boat in wherever you are. And if more people around you could be sympathetic of where you are, you'd be much more likely to turn your boat downstream. But we don't want any of you to become dependent on someone who is sympathetic we want you to get a whiff of your own current and make your own way and you innately do it in other words a little kid in the schoolyard who someone is making feel powerless is right to become belligerent on his own behalf that is the step in the right direction because it feels so much better than the 
powerlessness that he was feeling before. But if no one understands that and coaxes him through the belligerence right into the love that is natural to him, if they say, no, stop, it's wrong for you to be belligerent, then he goes back to powerlessness, then back to belligerent, then back to powerless, then back to belligerent, then back to powerless, then back to belligerent. And before you know it, he's got a label that he carries to the next place and the next place and the next place until life causes him to want so much more than he's figured out how to get that he snaps. And then he ends up someplace where the only thing they can do is give him some drug so that he doesn't feel so bad, you see. We want you to embrace your emotions. We want your emotions to matter. We want you to say to somebody, I really feel bad and I know that I can do something about it and I'm going to let all of you off the hook. I'm no longer going to demand that society or even you, lover of mine, do one thing that I need you to do. I'm going to let everybody off the hook and I'm going to take responsibility for the way I feel, which means the way I feel is none of your business because I've taken responsibility for it. So if you don't like how I'm feeling, then don't be anywhere near me because how I'm feeling is how I'm feeling. I'm putting my boat in the water where I am and yes, I'm reaching for a better feeling thought and a better feeling thought but my best feeling thought might be terrible by your standards and I cannot any longer guide myself by your standards I've been trying that and now I'm in the loony bin (laughs) there's not a person on the planet no matter what their state of being that knowing what you know you could not coax down the emotional scale It does not matter what their state of depression or despair is, knowing what you know and with the patience that you have and your understanding of who they really are and your understanding of the law and your access of the techniques that you are so good at, there's not a person on the planet you could not coax back into well-being, you see. The other day, Esther said to Jerry, tell me a story. And she does that because she just loves it when Jerry describes things and all she has to do is listen and it makes her feel good. And we say, it's nice to have somebody occasionally tell you a story, but start telling your own stories. Get your own stories so vivid in your vibration that they dominate the vibration of your being. Because when you start telling the story the way you want it to be, the universe will line up and give you all of the evidence and circumstances and events to support your desire that you want. And no one is left out of that. But when somebody feels left out of it, they feel left out of it. And so it's so helpful to have somebody who knows that no one's left out to say, hey, Come on over here and I understand how you feel and I'm not trying to get you to be different because this is the thing that goes wrong in everybody trying to help everybody, whether you're just generally trying to uplift or whether you're really treating someone in a clinical situation. The thing that you have to understand is this and it's really worth writing down. They are where they are. They are where they are and where they are is so very real because where they are is what they're emanating and the entire universe is giving them evidence to support what they're emanating and so that reality is so vivid. And when you try to tell them that the reality is not real, they want to go out of their minds because they know it's real. I feel this way and look what's happening. I feel this way and look what's happening. I feel this way and look what's happening. And pretty soon they say, I feel this way and look what's happening. And because what's happening, that's how I feel. And so it's a vicious cycle that they feel they cannot get out. And until you show them that they can improve, we're ringing just a little bit. Until you show them that you can, that they can find a feeling that is slightly improved and it's fine that it's not that much better, it's just a little better, and you get them going in the direction, then they are sort of lost out there in the desert. Jerry and Esther drive a monster bus. It is 45 feet long and Esther is usually the one who is driving and Jerry's in the back with headphones on editing something or working on some project and Esther will call him but he can't hear her. So she'll call again and he can't hear her. So she began honking the horn, but (laughs) that wasn't a good idea because it was scaring other drivers off into the bushes. It's a very loud horn. And so Esther discovered a button that she can push that turns all the lights in the bus on. And then she pushes it again and turns all the lights in the bus off. And so she just lights it up and lights it up and lights it up. And then Jerry knows, oh, I'm being called to the front of the bus. So he puts whatever he's doing down and eventually, in his own good time, makes his way... (laughs) to the summoning and he sits next to Esther and he says yes and Esther says occasionally oh never mind it was an upstream thought